dear friends welcome back to your favorite channel where we bring you trending and interesting news from around the world may i quickly encourage you to please subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe kindly hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories endeavor to share these new stories with your friends family relations and loved ones so they can get to know what is happening around the world and be informed Thank you so much guys i appreciate your support the special advisor to the lagos state governor on drainage matters mr joe Ibokwe has reacted to the quick notice given to the fulanese in igogo community in ibarapa local government area of oyo state according to the statement the former spokesperson of the all progressive congress in Lagos State made this known on his official Facebook page. After he watched the language of the man called Sunday Igbuho, he ran away with the thinking that the country is creating another monster in the Southwest, just like Namdekano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra group in the southeast that was proscribed by the government. In a long post made by Joe Ibukwe on his official Facebook page, he said, for a man like Sunday Ibuho, who doesn't know his pedigree and background, to arrogantly abuse the number one citizen of a state, Governor Sheyi Makinde of your state, it means that the country is about installing another and I'm the canoe in the southwest. Well, let me quickly read out what he said. After watching this video and the language of this man, it's called Sunday Ibuho, I ran away with the thinking that we are about creating another monster in the southwest, like Nam the canoe of the southeast. There is an elected governor called Sheyima Kende, and no one else has been elected to take his position in Oyo State. For a man that we do not know his pedigree and background to arrogantly and brazenly abuse the number one citizen of the state in such a derogatory manner, suggests to all that you are about installing another Namdekano in the southwest, and this will backfire. I have tried to restrain myself from talking about the matter, but when I noticed that some prominent online media influencers are backing the man, I decided to show some concern. Who is Sunday Ibuho? What does he do for a living? What is his background? Where is he coming from? What is his training? Where lies this courage to confront a sitting governor in this manner without fear? I am raising these fundamental questions because of our experience with Nambekano and IPOB in the Southeast. Many of you know, oh sorry, many of you may not know that this boy called Nambekano has asked his illiterate, confused, miserable, uncoordinated, and mindless followers to behead me anywhere they see me because I said Igbo intelligentsias, eggheads, intellectuals, stakeholders, bishops, university teachers, leaders of thoughts, traditional rulers, businessmen and women, etc., will have to gather at the historic city of Enugu to decide whether we want Biafra or not. I said that Igbo have not spoken on Biafra and the small boy, 
Nam de Kano cannot tell a very successful, dynamic, widely traveled, and sophisticated ethnic group where to go without a debate. The newly born politician said that he never wanted to discuss the matter, but he changed his mind when he noticed that some influential media persons were backing Sunday Igboho. Joe Igboque stated that the Yoruba nation where he has lived for 40 years are too civilized, sophisticated, and intelligent to see when danger comes. Yoruba nation I have lived for close to 40 years are too civilized, sophisticated, and too intelligent to see danger when it comes. I have not forgotten the bizarre criminal intervention of Ghani Adams' OPC in 2015 elections in Lagos. It was unbelievable what I saw as the public secretary or the, as the publicity secretary of the AC, ACN, and APC on the streets of Lagos. They nearly pulled Lagos down for PDP to take power at all costs. They failed woefully, and today, OPC is still looking for a ground to stand on. History is a great teacher. To claim not to know the danger of what is playing out in Oyo State is total ignorance. The man I see on this video and the background information I noticed here needs to be investigated. Do not support what you cannot handle when it gets out of hand. Sunday Igboho is not a police officer, not an army, navy, or an air force personnel. He is a private person. He has no power to do what he is doing in Oyo State. It can be dangerous if we do not nip this brigandage in the board, he said. All right, guys, what are your thoughts concerning this particular news story as it were? Joe Igbokwe has. So, guys, what are your thoughts concerning what um, Chief Igbokwe has said concerning uh, Sunday Igboho and Nam de Kano? Well, it is what it is. We keep our fingers crossed to see how things unfold on this particular news story as it were. Yes, Sunday Igboho a monster? Because he is saying or presenting Namdekano as a monster. Is Sunday Igboho a monster? The truth remains that if he considers these people as monsters, that to a very large extent, the government, you know, created the monsters. This is my opinion. I stand to be corrected. The government, as it were, created the monsters and gave these uh, monsters or supposed monsters the uh, level ground to play. Because this is common sense. There are reasonable ways or there are constitutional ways to do things. Even the people in the government know that they have constitutional rights to protect the people and to carry out uh, their duties and responsibilities. So that is to say, their failure to carry out their responsibilities as at when due has led to the creation of these supposed monsters that Joe Ibokwe has claimed are monsters. Because you cannot say that the people of the Southeast are being marginalized, but because you are privileged to be a commissioner or to be a special advisor or what have you in the government, in the party, then you expect everybody to toe your line and see things from your perspective. You do not expect that because you are privileged, those who are not privileged would have to sit down and fold their hands or must do the same thing that you did to get the position you have got into. Things do not work in that way. Everybody cannot be privileged at the same time and everybody cannot attain political positions because not everybody will be in politics. Come down to the Southwest. You cannot say that because the government failed to protect the people. When, where, 
Where was the government? Where were the security officers? Where was the governor of the state? Where was the presidency when the people of Iparapa, when the people of Igogo were crying out loud that people are kidnapping, their full and headsmen are raping their women, kidnapping them, and they are killing them unnecessarily and taking ransom? Where was the government? Where were the police officers? Where were the army? Where were the air force? Where were the navy? Where were the presidency? Where were the uh, Ondo state governor? Where was the inspector general of police when these people were crying out that the Seriki Fulani is harboring criminals and headsmen in his domain? They were all nowhere to be found. But when the people went to call Sunday, were all to come. It was then that they all woke up and I said that he is uh, illegal, he is a monster, he is doing this, he is doing that. It means that it is the government that gave rise to these monsters. Because if the government had hacked to the cry of the people at the, at the time that they were crying, these guys would not be called upon or this guy, nobody would call him, he wouldn't be talking about what we are talking about today. So I think Mr. Joe Ibokwe will do well to ensure and educate those in government or his his masters, his paymasters, that in every situation, a government must stand up and do the right thing. It is when the government do not do or carry out their duties or perform their duties as a twin due that the people would want to take the laws into their own hands to protect themselves. How many more people are supposed to be killed before the government will rise up? Now they are sending soldiers, sending people to go and investigate. But why didn't they send these soldiers? Why didn't they send these people from Abuja to investigate when the people were crying that their people were being killed and being kidnapped and ransom being taken away from them? You cannot play the, the constitution card or play the law card at this particular point in time. Let's remove the log in our eyes first before taking out the peg in somebody's eyes, in somebody else's eyes. Well, this is my thought and my opinion. I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong. Guys, drop by at the comment section. Let's know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support. And I'll see you on the other news. Thank you and bye for now.